Hi, I'm Nicholas Lodge and welcome to my Flower Pro video showing foliage. This brand new mold enables you to make multiple styles of leaves and includes several different varieties that we would use generally throughout the year like ivy and then also leaves that specifically we mostly use in the fall or autumn time but also could be used at other times of year as well. So here is the mold. So this is, as I said, the maple, ivy, and ginkgo leaf mold. This is also includes the back, all right? So this is basically a two-part mold. Here we have the beautiful, uh, large, sort of sugar Canadian style maple. And this can be used for very many varieties of maple leaf as well, okay? Um, and then this has obviously got a back veiner and you'll see how that's going to be used, okay? Um, and then we have here, uh, this is the Japanese maple. All right, now Japanese maple have beautiful sort of browny, red, yellowy colors in the autumn, fall time. But it's also a leaf that you could make in bright green. And you could obviously use this during the springtime, which is very, very pretty, okay? And then we have the, um, the ginkgo here. So the ginkgo leaf, all right? So this is basically the ginkgo leaf. And the ginkgo leaf is obviously this lovely fan-shaped leaf. Ginkgo tree is a very beautiful tree, a little bit like a maidenhair fern. And uh, some people call it the maidenhair fern tree because it looks like a large version of maidenhair ferns. And then here we have, this is English style ivy. So when we think of like green ivy or variegated ivy in this shape, we usually just refer to as English ivy. And then lastly, we have what we call bird's foot ivy, which bird's foot ivy is this more pointed ivy, okay? Now ivy is very useful because it can be used any time of the year in a bridal bouquet or spray on a cake. Um, it could be used in craft applications. You can make a little ivy plant. And it's really, as I said, wonderful because you can make it in different colors of green, also white and also pale cream, which I'm going to show a pale cream variety in this one. And then I'm going to do a green variety in this one, but they're very interchangeable. I'm going to take here five half length 26 uh, gauge wires. Now wires come in a standard 14 inch or um, about 36 centimeter length. So you just cut them in half, okay? So these are half length wires. I'm going to use some brown floral tape. I've cut this in half. So I've used a little tape cutter or you can use a pair of scissors. So we have some half width brown tape. And what I'm gonna do here is just gonna tap the wires level at the end. And then I'm going to start taping. Uh, so I'm gonna do here, five centimeters from the end of the wire, which is approximately two inches, okay? So you're gonna just start about five centimeters from the end of the wire here. And I'm going to now tape with my floral tape here. Now this technique I'm gonna show you is a technique I developed many years ago. And I use this for leaves that sit at a right angle to the stem of the leaf meaning things like wart lilies, uh, lotus leaves, nasturtium leaves, geranium leaves, violet leaves. I make those all in the same way as this. It's a very unique way to make a leaf and uh, it's a really nice way to support the leaf. So what we're gonna do now is gonna take the wires and I'm just gonna open these up basically at a right angle. So you're just gonna open them up like a fan. Okay, so you're just gonna open them up basically where they're relevant here. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make an umbrella. Okay, now if you look at this, you just want to make sure it's fairly flat, okay, like this. And you see this is now going to be cut to fit within the inside of the leaf. Now, the middle one is of course going to go straight down the middle. And then you're going to just bend the side ones up. So they will be at about the same angle as the actual vein in is. You see how those ones go in there. Now I'm using white wire and this is very important, especially if you're doing this in an autumn fall color because the white wire will be visible, but when it's dusted with the oranges and yellows and reds, you won't see this, but that is also why we wouldn't use green wire. And then the side ones here are almost just gonna go like this and like this, all right? So you're just gonna sort of almost like just get those to fit into your frame of your, there uh, you go. I'm gonna pop this on here. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna snip the two bottom ones here just a little bit with my wire cutters here. And just make sure that the this fits inside the frame like so, you see? So that basically is fitting inside the frame, all right? And of course, you could make as many of these as you would uh, need uh, the actual leaves, okay? 
Once you've done that, um, next thing we're going to do is going to just take a little bit of uh, cream paste. Now, um, I'm using here a white petal uh, model flower modeling paste, petal paste, gum paste, and I've colored it with some cream color just to make a nice dark cream. Now, another little tip I will share with you, when I do autumn fall leaves, obviously living in the United States, especially in the northern part of the United States, uh, states like Vermont and Massachusetts and that are known for their beautiful fall foliage. A lot of people when they make fall leaves will try and make them in green and then try and dust them oranges and reds. Your cream is a very it's a perfect color. It's a really good foundation to build those beautiful autumn fall colors, autumnal colors onto. Now when I do this um, particular leaf, I'm going to first of all just have a little bit of softened paste. Now I'm going to actually use that to glue the wires. So if you see here, this is actually the, the leaf, all right? You see how the wires are going to be glued to the back of this, all right? And um, I don't want to use egg white, all right? Because the reason is that egg white, if you use too much of it, when the egg white dries, dries like shellac, and then what happens, or like a varnish, and then the dusting powder won't stick to it. But also, um, if you use, for example, edible glue, it's not really strong enough. You can also use Superbond. So Superbond is a Nicholas Lodge product that I use on quite a few things. It's a really, really thick glue. You could just brush that on. Um, but what I'm going to show you here is just how to do this uh, with a softened paste. Now, so I'm going to actually just take a little bit of my um, flour paste, gum paste, petal paste, and I'm just going to mix this up with some water. And I said I'm using water here because this is going to, of course, once it dries, it will dry so you could dust over the top of it. So I just want to have this ready, okay? So I'm just going to take this product here, and then we're going to just going to mix this up. It's going to make it into quite a thick sort of glue, okay? And you can put this into like a little container, a little pot here. So you've just got that ready. And that would be enough for about, you know, 10 leaves, so you don't really need that much of the product, okay? So it's going to pop this to one side. And um, then we're going to, now we can actually move on to make the actual leaf. Now when we're making the leaf here, we're going to be using a number 11 size on the size guide of the cream color. Now, of course, you could use, you could make maple leaves in a um, maple color, uh, you know, like in a green color, because of course, in the autumn time, they change color. But when they're on the tree, they're going to have, uh, you know, could be green color as well. So this could be done in a pale green. But I'm going to take a number 11 size ball of paste. So remember, when we measure the size guide, so the size guide comes with book one and book two. Just going to measure this in so you have about one third below and about two thirds above. Okay. Going to condition my paste. So just going to just take a little bit of vegetable shortening here. Okay. So just condition your little ball of paste. This gives it elasticity and malleability. And then I'm going to take, in fact, on all of these um, elements here, I'm going to use just a little tiny bit of vegetable fat or shortening. I'm just going to just gently rub that on, but it's a very, very small amount, okay? So what this does, because these are shallow molds, it helps to hold the paste in here, just like on my rose calyx and certain other flowers that I do. Now I'm going to flatten out my paste. I'm actually going to brush, put some cornstarch, corn flour onto this, all right? So I've got the shortening in there because this will also aid with the sort of the back part of this because we're going to press the vein on. So going to, now there's several ways you can do this. Like when I show you the ivy, you can just press this in. But what I found actually works well is if you roll this into a sausage, so just roll this into a sausage. And normally when you're rolling a sausage, if you just use a little, the aid of a little silicone mat, or also you can use the back of the veiner as well, the veiner mold, okay? Anyway, so what we're going to do here, we're going to make this about the, the width of the widest part of the mold, okay? So that's going to be from here to here. And then what I would do is you can use your companion tool or you can use your knife just to... So this is very similar if you watch my sunflowers, all right? So how I did basically the sunflower. So you're just going to make like three sausages. They don't have to be perfect because they're going to be squashed in. But what this is going to do, and then you can just sort of dust these with a little bit of cornstarch here and you're going to place these into the mold one so this is just because of the shape of the mold i found a little bit easier than just starting off with a ball of paste all right so it's going to do that you're going to put just a little corn flour cornstarch on top and then we're going to take your back of your maple vena 
I'm just going to press this in. So this is the technique I've used on some of my larger leaves, like my sunflowers and things. So you see how what it does, it sort of gives you the basic shape of the leaf. So it really just saves a little bit of work. And then we're just going to start now working towards the edge of the leaf with your cosmetic sponge. You see what this is going to do, this is going to give you that beautiful thinness on the edge. Because many people when they look at the Flower Pro flowers can't believe that they actually came out of a mold because typically when you mold things a lot of times they're a little bit heavy and thick but using this concept where you sort of just thin towards the edge makes it very easy to do. And if you if you sort of haven't got enough just push some paste from that center part because the center part is obviously a little bit thicker. Now, for those of you working in air drying clay, you know, air drying paper clay is extremely lightweight. So you could use the method I'm going to use for all of the other leaves where you just insert the wire into here. But I found in making sugar uh, maple leaves because they're a little bit heavier, this method I'm gonna show you is just much, much more successful. Uh, but we did put the ridge in here because of course you could use that for, as I said, uh, using different size maple leaves and then of course you could also with air drying clay which is a little bit more lightweight. So just going to press that on. Okay. Then we're going to take the back veiner. Okay. So this is your back veiner here and you're going to just line this up. So you're just going to line that up with the, the line in the mold there. You can see the little, just like if it had a wire in here. All right. So you're just going to line that up and you're just going to just press this onto the back. Just press this all over back of the leaf. So when you take this off, and you get this beautiful veining. You can see obviously the incredible veining and detail on the mold, okay? And then uh, what we're now gonna do is gonna take this out of the mold. So generally just gonna just sort of go around and release it a little bit. Now with most of these leaves, what I found the easiest way to do this is I'm just gonna use my companion tool. My companion tool will just be, as I said, in, enticed it out. And then I use a little scraper. You see, I just hold that and pull that out from the, from the mold, okay? Now, if you have any little areas where you, you've, your paste has extended past the edge of the mold there, you can just press that in. And you can even trim that off with scissors if you needed to, but just try not to, as I said, overfill your mold like that, okay? And then I'm gonna just put this onto now, so I put this onto the back of my little mini pad or flower pad piece of, but generally something like dense, like because we need to flip it over. And you're going to now just take your, and all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use my little um, companion tool. And I'm just going to put just a little bit of, you can also just use your finger, you could use a paintbrush. But what I want to do here is I'm just going to put just a little bit of this softened, this softened paste just on the top of the wire. All right, so you're just going to just put a little bit onto there. As I said, you can use a paintbrush and then just wash it. Or as I said, you can use this technique. As I said, this is just a softened paste and uh, water, okay? As I said, because the egg, egg white or edible glue is, first of all, not really thick enough, but also the egg white, as I said, once it dries, will dry like a like a glot, like a varnish. And then what it will mean is when you try and dust the flour, you won't be able to dust it properly. Now, of course, this leaf, um, you can um, also, with when you do the leaves here, all right, so you can work the edge of this a little bit, all right? So you can use your little companion tool here and you can just work the edge. You do this on the back of the, the back of the leaf. And you can also use, as you'll see on some of them, I will show you how to use like a ball in tool as well, but you're just gonna give a little bit of movement onto here. All right, it doesn't need a lot. And as I said, it wants to go on the soft side of the pad here. Now, this is a sort of, you have to get this right first time, okay? So you're just going to just pop this into the into here like so. All right, and you're just going to just press this on. Make sure that that's inside the. Here we go. And then what I do here is I'm just going to put a little bit of corn flour on the back of here, so I can so you obviously your wires are not sticky, and I can just pop this into the to the leaf. All right, now now what I do is you're going to turn this over. All right, and that's why you want it on a pad. You see. Now then, you're just gonna take a little bit of corn and you're just gonna actually, where the wire is there, you see how you can actually then bend the leaf to shape. So you see how you actually then just bend your leaf to whatever shape you want it to dry in, you see? So you'll have this beautiful um, color here. And then 
You're just gonna take just a pair of scissors here and I'm just gonna just trim down. So I'm just gonna sort of cut in just a little bit deeper with this particular technique until you sort of, it's almost like where the leaf would come out. All right, then you see how you're gonna just take this and what will happen is that the, the leaf will just sit on the top of this wire like this, all right? You can see this is one that I have that's dry, all right? And so once it's, once it's sort of dried for a little bit, you can also just like hang it upside down like that. So if you want the leaves to fall that way. But as I said, this is gonna give you a nice strong, and also the difference is when you have just a single wire in here, if your leaf's not 100% dry, it's gonna be a bit unstable. So this technique is a very, is a very cool technique to learn. Um, and as I said, you can use this for many different types of leaves. Uh, when you're doing, as I said, different autumn leaves here, like that. But see, you can just literally, as I said, this is the soft one, you can just bend it to shape. So you see how you're just bending it to shape here. Just make sure, as I said, that's inside the paste, all right? So you can just press it in with your fingers, but you almost want it just to embed into that, and that will give you your fall, your fall leaf. So of course you could make those um, for a cake. You could do obviously those to go with other fall autumn flowers and fruits and berries and things. Um, you, the other thing that this is really nice for as well is when you make grape leaves. This makes a perfect grape leaf. So if you just make this in green, vein it, and then of course when you do green ones, you could use green wires, okay? So when you do autumn fall colors, you wanna use obviously the cream colored paste and you want to use the 26 gauge white wires. But for a green leaf, like a grape leaf, you're gonna use 26 gauge green wires, okay? Um, and so when we uh, come back, we'll be um, obviously going through the coloring on the maple leaf and uh, showing you how to finish that off. See you real soon. Now obviously maple, if you do a search, maple comes in many, uh, many color combinations. So obviously during this sort of the, the summertime, obviously spring, summer, the maple leaf is green when it, of course it starts to basically dry on the tree and it falls off and it obviously has these beautiful colors, okay? So pretty much, you know, you're gonna be dependent on um, your sort of color palette, all right? So the colors I'm showing you is just really to give an idea about how I do blended colors and just, but of course, this color palette could totally change. It could be more towards green, which is like sort of like early fall, uh, autumn time, but the autumnal colors I'm gonna use are sort of in this sort of tonal uh, colors. So um, I'm gonna start off first of all with with a color called autumn gold, okay? So this is sort of almost like a sort of a mustardy yellow color, all right? And with the autumn gold, I'm going to brush this on the maple leaf. So when I do this, I'm gonna use a sort of, uh, from, the, from the center of the leaf, I'm just gonna come out. I've already got a little bit of this on. You see how this color will come out from, from here, okay? And then I'm gonna just blend this. So I'm gonna come from the inside to the outside. You always use in a sort of scrubbing action on this. It doesn't want to be too symmetrical either, okay? And then you see I'm also going to do this on the back. Now remember we use white wires and you see then the wires, once they're actually all finished, will be uh, dusted over. So they really won't be noticeable on here. Now of course you could use traditional leaf method of uh, using the one single wire, but you just have to make sure it's really totally dry. This technique I showed you with the support of the like the umbrella, really does uh, make a nice difference. And it means you can actually do the leaves and literally an hour later, you could start dusting them. Um, you know, even if you didn't have a food dehydrator because they dry very quickly in this method because the air gets to them. Now, of course, if you were doing several maple leaves, you would do all of the base color first. All right, and of course you can be, um, when you're doing this, then you can take your base color and of course that could go back into your little container because it's the color we're using the most of, all right? Now the other colors we're gonna use are gonna be accent colors. All right, so I'm gonna take some orange and I typically would just use the same brush um, throughout the next, all the next steps, all right? But again, if you were doing obviously three maple leaves, you do your orange on each of the three. Also, of course, you can put gloves on for this as well. Now, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just blend in with my orange so I'm gonna go sort of around the outside of the leaf, okay? So you see how we're actually blending this in. Just gonna work around your edge. This usually takes approximately about five minutes to dust a leaf like this. But as I said, you know, your colors don't have to be exact. You know, you just sort of just use those sort of autumn fall colors. But I'm also gonna show you how you can, by taking you know, orange is a color we associate a lot with autumn and fall and the autumn season. Um, 
if you actually then go over the top with red and then a little bit of like a ruby and then an aubergine color, you almost get a sort of like going from a bright orange to a, a more muted color, okay? So you see how we're gonna blend this in. And then what I'm gonna do is with my brush, my flat brush, I'm gonna sort of just cut in with the orange. So you see how you don't, it's not so, so sort of defined, you know, see how the color blends in. You of course will also do the same on the back as well. I'm not going to do the whole of this back, I'm just going to sort of show you the basics, but really you're just duplicating the colors on the front and then you can see on the back, okay? All right. So anyway, so you do your orange on your back. Then we're going to just clean your brush and then I'm going to now take some ruby, all right? So ruby is red. Now you see when you add the ruby to the edge of the orange, you see how it makes it, it doesn't really look red, it looks more like a darker orange, you see? So this will just help to, so just define the edge. It almost accentuates that color. Okay, then we're gonna take a little bit of ruby. Now the ruby is obviously a dark red, so it's almost sort of like a, you know, obviously like a ruby stone. So that's gonna go on top of that. And again, I'm just gonna cut in with the ruby. Now this color would be done on the back as well, all right? I'm just on this one really just concentrating on the front, but you just repeat the process uh, on the back also. And then I'm gonna take some aubergine, which uh, aubergine is like an eggplant color, okay? Or, and so you're gonna take the aubergine and again, just gonna go over the top here, just, just in places, not like all the way around, but you see just sort of here and there, I'm just hitting that with a little bit of the aubergine color. But as I explained when I showed you the making of this, the nice thing about doing this with, um, doing it with the cream color, you have a really good foundation to then work on, all right? So this sort of builds up your lovely colors on the edge, okay? All right, so that builds up your colors on the edge there. And then you can, um, once you've done that, I'm gonna change out to another brush. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of green, a little lime green color and a little bit of chocolate. Now I'm not gonna put a lot of lime green on here because, but when a leaf is of course not completely, you know, it's gonna have a little bit of green on it, okay? So, so what you're gonna do here is you're gonna actually just cut down into the main five lines. All right, so just gonna just brush down into those five lines here, which are gonna be like the main veins of the and remember, always working in the, from, because you want the color to dissipate as it goes away. So you're going to also work from source away from source and never do this, all right? You're always working just in one direction here, like that. Of course, you could also make these very fantasy. You could use like metallics. You could use luster dusts on these. I'm just doing this in a more natural way. And then finally, I'll take a little bit of chocolate on here. Now chocolate, you don't want to use too much of it because it will make it very muddy looking. So then I'm going to now just come into where the green is and I'm just gonna sort of go over the top of that with the chocolate. It's always a good idea, you know, if you haven't done a lot of uh, dusting of like foliage like this, what I would suggest you do is just, just cut out a leaf, you know, or just mold a leaf, you know, just do a flat leaf. You don't have to put the wire in or anything. And then just try your colors out on that because it's just like really like learning makeup or learning painting. It just takes a little time to, to learn. And you see how your colors will come from there. So of course your colors will be um, put on like this, all right? Now, of course, when you're doing even two or three leaves, you can change the color out slightly. So, you know, you could have this one more burgundy and ruby, so ruby uh, aubergine color. You could have this one a little bit more greeny color. So when I'm doing an autumn arrangement, I would often change that out. Now, once you get the, um, the maple uh, dusted, we're just going to steam this. So I'm gonna bring in my steamer here. Now, when we steam um, and uh, this is to set the color, all right? So in a lot of a lot of situations when we're doing coloring, we are going to steam and then we're going to glaze. But with the maple leaf, all right, because uh, maple leaves, when they are uh, just off, are off the tree, like on the ground, all right, they don't really have, they just have a little bit of natural luster, but they don't really, they're not shiny, okay? So we're going to then just put this through the steam, all right, now what this will do, this will help to sort of really, as I said, set all the colors. Of course, this one would be finished as well, all right? But, um, and then you steam these and you stand them up, but we don't put lacquer or glaze on these. And the reason is, is because I said a leaf, when it has that much sort of 
oranges and autumnal colors on it, it's not going to obviously have a lot of luster. All right, so it's gonna be a little bit more dull because it's basically drying, especially once the leaf comes off the tree, it's gonna dry out. And uh, so I don't, I don't ever put glaze on these leaves. I'm just going to steam them when they basically dry off in a couple of hours. They will just be a nice sort of natural look to them. All right. Um, if you were, of course, were doing these in green or you're making grape leaves, because remember, this makes a fabulous grape leaf veiner. Um, so if you're doing grape leaves, you, of course, do them green. You dust them with a darker, like, say, a foliage green. And then, of course, then you would steam and lacquer them or glaze them, just like I've shown on other foliage. So here is the beautiful uh, sugar maple. Um, Canadian maple and as I said uh, obviously uh, a lovely one also for making grape leaves. So I hope you've enjoyed this first part of the foliage mold. So now we're going to move on to the Japanese foliage. Now Japanese foliage, the Acer, is one of my favorite foliages in autumn fall. Um, I have spent a lot of time in Japan, especially in the autumn time, and this sort of color is just magnificent. But as I explained in the introduction of the mold, this could also be made in other colors as well, because maple, when it's obviously in the springtime, is very vibrant, almost like a limey green. So to make this beautiful, um, almost like a terracotta color, you can start off with like red, pre-made uh, red paste, uh, flower modeling paste, and then just add a little bit of brown, a little bit of yellow to it. But you can also, of course, in white, add red, brown, and yellow and you can also buy there are some companies that actually make a terracotta colored paste gel color so you just want almost this sort of uh, orangey red color okay so it's like almost like a brick or a dark terracotta color now we're going to start off so this is the Japanese maple now this is also adorable to use um, for example as decoration these little small ones you could use on decoration on petty fours and cake pops and things like that the larger one you could use on um, cookies you could use these on cupcakes so you can do them just like the maple uh, maple is the same if you wanted to do a wedding cake just with like maple leaves around the cake you don't have to wire these okay you just follow the directions and just don't put the wire in but anyway on the Japanese maple so we're going to start off with the smallest size one so that is going to be now that's going to actually be a number four small so that wants to be a number four that goes through the hole okay so just like on the um, large maple we're going to just put a little tiny bit I do mean a very small amount of vegetable shortening into here vegetable fat now remember when you finish with your mold um, you can either wash this with a little bit of dish soap um, so washing up liquid and then dry it um, you could dry it in a food dehydrator if you have one but also you can put these in the dishwasher as well they are dishwasher safe so um, it's as I said you just pop it in the dishwasher and that will just obviously clean out any oil that's in there so a little bit of shortening so I'm going to take your paste and then I still will put just a little bit of corn flour cornstarch on there I'm going to put my little ball of paste in there now this one I'm just going to press in with my cosmetic sponge and then using my Dresden tool, so this is the Dresden veining tool, I'm just going to push this into the mold. So very much like I do on some of my uh, molds that have this sort of shape to them. Okay, just make sure you stay within the perimeter of the mold, okay, so you don't have sort of overfill like this. Now on the bigger leaves, you'll see I create a little ridge with my companion tool. This is so tiny, you can't really get in there with the companion tool because it's nearly as big as the companion tool. So what I do here is gonna take your wire. So we're gonna use here 28 gauge wire. Now I'm using white wire, but you could also use green wire for this because of a dark color. So just a little bit of egg white goes onto there. And then we're gonna insert this into the ridge. All right, so basically it's gonna go into where the little ridge is here. All right, and it's going to go in about two thirds of the way in. So it wants to go in about two thirds. Now on all of these leaves, all right, all of these leaves, the ivy leaves, the bird's foot ivy, and the Japanese maple, we put the wire in a little bit further than we would normally do on something like a rose leaf, okay? The reason is, is we can't pinch the bottom of this leaf like we do, for example, like a lot of other leaves we make. So usually, most of the time, we only go in halfway here. We're going in a little bit bigger uh, to compensate, a little bit deeper to compensate. Now I'm gonna use my maple leaf. Now all I'm gonna do here is just gonna bring this down. So you see the maple leaf is under there. So you're just positioning the wire over the top like this. I'm just gonna press this on the back. So when you take that off, you see you will get the central vein on here. So you can actually get the central vein on there like so. And then this one here, um, as I said again, just turn this over. And usually you're just gonna encourage this to come out. So just use your, here just come out of the mold there. Now this is a very tiny little leaf, so if you do find that the wire 
just literally just press it, all right, and the wire will become embedded back into there, okay, because it is quite tiny. And also don't press too much with the back veiner either. So this will be your little tiny Japanese maple leaf, so adorable leaf. I'm going to put this onto, onto the, uh, turn it over to the back. And on this one here, I'm going to use just the uh, little needle tool end of the, and just on the main three, I'm just going to almost do like a little feathering on the edge. So you just you do this on the back. So you're just going to do like a little tiny feathering on the back of the leaf. And then we're going to turn, turn this over. You're just going to hollow the base around the vein in, to bound the companion tool, the needle tool end of the companion tool like this. All right. And that will be your, as I said, your little Japanese maple leaf. Okay. We put this in some crepe foam to dry. So you can see here, I've got several I've made already, but you can see a beautiful, such a cute little tiny leaf. All right. And as you can see, this is very, very small, all right? So it's only, um, as I said, about 15 millimeters across. So um, you could use this on a lot of little small pastries, you know, even like sugar cubes they do in Japan, this little tiny one. Next one I'm gonna do would be, um, so when you're doing the, the Japanese maple, this obviously would be the next one we would do, which would be a number five size, okay? So this would be number five. That would be just regular number five size, all right? So that would be one third below, two thirds above, okay? And then the large size one is gonna be a number six, but I'm gonna be just a little bit generous, you know, because although there are 16 holes on here, and sometimes we use just a regular size where we have one third below, two thirds above, sometimes we use a small size. This is uh, needs to be almost like a little bit more oversized number six. So you see I'm a little bit more towards about a quarter and about three quarters, because as you can see, it's way, way a lot smaller than a small number seven, which would be your next option. So just, just a generous number six, all right? Now also remember when you're using the molds, if you are pushing paste in and you feel like your paste is a little bit thin, just grab a little extra paste and push it in, all right? Or if you've got too much paste, you can just scrape it out or just make a smaller ball the next time. Um, a lot of this is gonna be due to your sort of skill level as far as how many leaves you've made, as far as how thin you can get it to be, okay? So, so I'm gonna just show you the large size one because they're all done in exactly the same way. This is obviously a little bit easier to see because it's a little bit larger here. And um, I'm gonna show you also how I do the ridge. So this is a, this is just a generous number six size. So we're gonna put just your little bit of that into here. Remember, I always put a little bit of corn flour, corn starch onto my ball of paste, because then you can just press this into the mold. And again, I'm gonna just use the back veiner, just gonna press this in. So this will get you sort of positioned a little bit to the edge here, okay? And you're just gonna, just gonna work this now into the mold here. You see how I'm just using my sponge? Just gonna work this down into the mold and then you can use your, as I said, your Dresden tool here just to sort of push this into the ends of your mold like that. Okay, all right. Now, here is where I'm gonna use the companion tool, all right? So like if you watch like, for example, my you know poppies and some of my other ones, you'll see the same sort of technique. So what you do is you're just gonna press each side here. So you see what you're actually doing is you're creating this little ridge, all right? This little ridge is gonna be used to accommodate the wire. This is all, these are all done with 28 gauge wires because it's quite a soft, uh, not a sort of stiff looking foliage. And so again, you're gonna just take the wire here going to insert this into the paste, like so. It wants to go about two thirds of the way up, okay? And um, then you're going to then again, just press the back veiner. So I'm going to go up a little bit. So actually like on this one, where these like little horns are here, I'm just lining that up with about where that is on the Japanese maple. And that will just give you the, so you're going to get your vein in on your back of your Japanese maple, okay? And again, you're just going to take this over you're going to peel this off here. If you if you do have like a little, if it feels like it's a little bit thin in the middle, I'm just going to show you another little trick here. You know, so all you can do there is just going to just patch this. It's a little bit humid in here in the filming studio at the moment, so that sort of doesn't help sometimes with paste. But if you have like, if you can see that it's a little bit, you can just actually just like patch this. So just put a little bit of extra paste onto the back here like that and then just repress the back onto here. All right, so 
you can just bring that down to about here and press this on. See, that would just obviously revein it. That's just gonna give a little bit of thickness to it. All right, but so you can turn this over and you see what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna just use my, and you see how I'm just using my little companion tool. All right, and see how that will come out like that. All right, so it will come out beautifully um, from, from there. So again, we're gonna just turn this over. All right, it's gonna turn this over onto the back. And remember, when I did the little tiny one, I used the companion tool pointed end. Here, I'm gonna use the veining tool. I'm just gonna do this just on the top three serrations, like this. So one, two, three, like that. And then you're just gonna just turn this over here. Just gonna just pinch this. So you're just gonna pinch it with your thumb and finger and you're just gonna just hold that and you're gonna create a hollow on the bottom there and you're just gonna just pinch that to create the shape of the leaf, all right, the Japanese maple leaf. Again, this is gonna just go into, this will just go into the former like this. And you can see how your, your maple leaves will just go into the former like that, all right? So that is how we do the Japanese maple. Now, we need to let these dry, okay? Um, these ones I actually made um, about an hour ago and I just had them in my food dehydrator. So remember, a food dehydrator, especially as I said, it's humid in the uh, studio at the moment. So if you were drying this at normal room temperature, I would say two to three hours. But as I said, if you have a food dehydrator, I have that set on um, 115 degrees Fahrenheit or 45 degrees centigrade. And as I said, like 45 minutes or an hour, they're going to be totally dry. So a food dehyd dehydrator I've talked about before is a great way to obviously speed up the drying process. And especially when you're busy trying to get flowers ready for a cake, um, obviously that would uh, change it. So um, I'm going to, as I said, you let these dry. When I come back, I'm going to show you how I do the taping and the assembly of the of the Japanese maple ready for coloring. So once your Japanese maple leaves are dry, um, we're going to move on to the next step. So I'm going to use some half width brown floral tape. So I use brown. If you were, of course, doing these in springtime, you could use green floral tape. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to start the floral tape down about, you know, four to five centimeters, about two inches down, go round. And you've seen this before in lots of other videos and you see then you just slide your floral tape up to the bottom and that way you get this beautiful start because it's not an easy because of the shape of the leaf you can't start the tape right at the bottom so just sliding this up and you want to take down about two-thirds of the way down the leaf okay so it's going to just take down about two-thirds of the way down it's going to tape just slide this up to the bottom of the leaf and it's going to tape down about two-thirds of the way down and so we're using the half width brown tape this just looks, of course, like in autumn time, a nice color to use, all right? Now, when we put this together, um, you, of course, can do different configurations. I'm actually going to show you here um, a grouping, a small, medium, and two large, and then like almost like a subspray. So what you would do here is you're just gonna take this. This is gonna be very much like the ivy. You're just gonna take, so you're just gonna start taping here. So depending on how you're gonna use this would depend on how you would arrange the little Japanese maple. And then you see then your large leaf would come in here. And of course, on your bigger leaves, you can use your pair of pliers here. This is 28 gauge wire as well. So you could use tweezers also. It's a very delicate little um, leaf here. As I said, for those of you who do paper crafts, this is also beautiful um, in the air drying clay is if you do this as a, you know, in obviously in uh, for air drying clay for cards and things like that. It's lovely. So you're going to just put this in and then at that point there I'm going to add a 22 gauge wire. So this 22 gauge wire, so when you put your last leaf in, you're just going to add this. So this is going to give you a sort of strength to the main part of the stem, okay? So you're just going to come down here. All right, so this is going to give you the, so this will give you the little sort of the small spray here like this. And then you can then do like a little subspray, all right? So subspray would mean it sort of comes off from the main spray. So you're gonna take your, here a small, a medium, and a large, and I'm going to put the, actually here, I'm gonna put the medium on the opposite side here, okay? But there's no sort of hard and fast rules here, it's just really how you're going to, how you want to use it on a cake, all right? So this is gonna come here, and then we're gonna put in your large leaf here, okay? And so this is going to come off as a little 
as I said, like a sub branch. I don't need to add a stronger wire here to this. And you see then this would just come off. So you create this sort of beautiful spray here. And then I'm just gonna just take down. So I'm gonna put these two together. Now remember, nothing is set in stone. So when you're putting flowers together or foliage like I am here, if something doesn't look right, you can just sort of untape it and just really start start again. You see how it's gonna give you this really nice spray. Um, of uh, and of course the 22 gauge wire will then give you this extension on the the bottom here all right so here you have your japanese maple and it's all beautiful fall colors and of course we're going to enhance this in the next step so when i come back i'm going to show you how we color this and uh, talk about steaming techniques and things um, so i'll be right back to show you the coloring so now moving on to the coloring of the Japanese maple. Now Japanese maple, again, if you just do like a Google search, obviously Japanese maple come in many beautiful colors. You see here I was talking about making the maple leaf in the spring, so you could just make it in a lime green color. It would be fabulous, and of course, but we often uh, sort of see Japanese maple in these really lovely, rich, sort of red, sort of burgundy colors. So that's the colors I'm gonna show you. But again, you know, depending on what other things you have, because like, for example, you might have a burgundy rose, so you might want to make this a little bit more sort of towards a yellowy color, all right? And of course, when you're, say, for example, blending two types of maple together, this one is more the sort of oranges and yellows, and then you have the beautiful, rich colors here of the other maple, okay? So, you know, when you're mixing with other fall or autumn foliage you need to just think about your color palette now I'm going to start off with red okay so I'm going to use a little bit of red here and uh, as I explained uh, in my uh, obviously when I showed making this and talked about this uh, several times you know it's up to you if you feel more comfortable dusting the uh, leaves before you assemble them that's totally fine but I'm going to put a little bit of red onto here the other thing is never do like this because you'll break the leaves you just want to just obviously dust a little bit of red onto them. Now, the reason why I like to have my leaves together is you can just look at it as a whole. If you dust each individual leaf, you might make each of them very, very similar. So then when you put it together, some of this doesn't look so good. So, but anyways, you're just gonna put some red. So you're just gonna go down the center of the each of the sections with some red. Then we're gonna take a little bit of ruby. All right, so remember ruby is obviously a ruby red, so it's a dark red color. I'm gonna put a little bit of that onto the tips of the leaf you're going to do this from the outside to the inside so just like i did on the maple leaf but of course this is a much smaller leaf so i'm using a flat brush here but i'm using just a little small flat brush okay you will also repeat this on the back as well so this needs to be on the back of the leaf both sides okay then we're going to take the aubergine now the aubergine or eggplant color this really brings in that beautiful tonal color you can see to the leaf. So you're just going to put, the, put this onto the edge and you're going to come down. So I'm actually coming down the tips of these uh, leaves as well with the aubergine color. But you know, if you did, you could use purple. I mean, as I said, there's lots and lots of obviously colors. So especially with these three um, leaf projects with the maple leaf, with the Japanese maple and ginkgo leaves. Of course, as I said, depending on what time of fall you are depicting would be depending what colors you're gonna put onto there, okay? So you're gonna get this lovely color onto there. And then finally, I'm gonna put a little bit of green. Now, I always add a little bit of green because that just gives it a little tiny bit of life, all right? Because usually even though the colors are this, you're gonna have this little subtle, very subtle green. So this is actually just a lime green here. And I'm just gonna put just a little tiny bit of the lime green just right at the just at the base there so just for the very very bottom of the leaf the very very bottom of the leaf and then we're going to do a little bit of that onto the back as well so just a little bit of green here here and here onto the leaf all right so that would be my as a beautiful sort of colors you can see the depth of color there is is because we started off with that almost like that terracotta base color because um, a lot of times, you know, students sometimes ask me, you know, when you make flowers, can you, or leaves, can you make everything white and you can dust it? I mean, you could, but you could never make a white leaf this color, okay? Um, you know, some people make things white, they airbrush them, and then let the airbrush dry and then dust on top. So you could do that. Like you could actually spray your white uh, leaves a terracotta color. 
but typically with airbrush it's always going to make the leaves look a little like painted looking a little bit more shiny so i always prefer a dust but usually the rule of thumb is you always want to start off with a lighter version of what you want to end up with all right um, and then the other thing is is that when you're of course doing uh, fall leaves like as i said the autumnal colors on say the maple um, or the ginkgo the cream color is much much better than white white is a little stark cream is a more natural color now in the case of these leaves i'm going to steam them all right and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to just lightly spray these with lacquer or you could go with leaf glaze just very very lightly these have a little bit more of a shine to them um, also japanese maple you know stay on the tree a lot longer than general maple leaves do so they would have a little bit more natural luster so i'm just going to just gently steam the leaves this will just remember as i said just sort of set the color all right and then just going to just spray over just gently all right do this on the back as well remember do this in a you know outside or in a box or on a protected so you cover your surface and as i said when that obviously um the glaze dries you're going to have those lovely tonal colors uh, into there so that is our as i said japanese maple all right our second of our uh, from our uh, maple um from our maple uh, ivy and uh, ginkgo leaf the foliage mold okay so I hope you'll enjoy making these and also, as I said, have fun making these in different colors. And remember, there's also actually a variety of ivy, which is like this shape. So you could actually even make this in green as an ivy. So this is a mold you can use all year round for your Flower Pro projects.